Previously on Verity. The second I see Boulette, I grab Billy and just leave. Let's just say that guy and I have a bit of a history. I knew him back when I was in med school. You see just a bunch of black SUVs in the parking lot. You probably clock about seven men and women in windbreakers. Above that, Lewis, you brought the fucking men in black to town. The other vampire that you asked about, that was Riley. What you did has put a target on her head. Jonas, you hear in the back of your head. Nobody on the street. And that is going to be for harm. That kills me. Welcome back to the barbecue, everyone. We have Lewis's burnt body smoking and sizzling on the ground. Jonas, you are standing with Kelly as the substation shoots out sparks and bolts of electricity. Jonas just stands there for a moment, sort of stunned. After like a second or two, they just kind of snap into action. Um, and they run up to Kelly. You gotta go get somebody. You gotta go get help. And they'll like gesture wildly to the hospital. Kelly takes a beat, also in shock, and after a second or two, she shakes her head, yes, very fast, and wordlessly runs off towards the hospital. All right, you son of a bitch, Jonas says as they like, run over and baseball slide uh, into Lewis. They'll flip him over onto his back and prop him up just a little bit, and they're going to try to heal him at least somewhat. I mean, this is a lot, but something is better than nothing. Uh, you lay your hands on him to heal him, and you're waiting for the pendant on your chest to light up, but nothing's coming out of the amulet. It's not even lighting up or heating up or anything like that. Come on. Come on. Fix him. I don't have time for your games right now. What do you want? What is it? <laughs> Compromise. What does that mean? What? Compromise how? All magic comes with a price. As you hear that voice echo in your head, you see a black smoke pour out of the amulet and into Lewis's mouth. You see Lewis's eyes open, and they have this bright white light that you've only seen on the amulet. And you see Lewis stands up, and in that voice that you've heard echoing in your head, you hear, Hmm. <sighs> It's been a while since I've had a form. And Lewis turns around, faces the substation, and you see that black smoke pours out again. This time it goes toward the substation, and it just grows and grows into this gigantic smoke cloud as it goes around the sparks and the bolts of electricity, and it starts to just envelop everything as it begins to shrink and shrink, taking all the sparks and the electricity with it, with all the smoke and sparks, it looks like a lightning storm. But as it gets smaller and smaller, the light gets dimmer and dimmer. The smoke disperses, and you see it funnel all the way back into your pendant, and the electricity is no longer there. It is weakened. For now, your friend, he will survive. But he will pay. Price. Jesus. And Jonas is gonna grab Lewis and start dragging him toward the hospital. So you run to the hospital and you get to the front doors. You can see that some EMTs come out. They're running out of the front doors of the hospital. And she says, that's them. That's them. He's the one that got struck by lightning. You see that the two EMTs, they pull out their stretcher and they grab Lewis off of you, put him on the bed. You see immediately other doctors, other nurses are trying to tend to Lewis as they run him inside the building. And you are left outside with Kelly. Well, that sure was something. Um, are, are you okay? Kelly is just staring blankly into the doors of the hospital, standing there just motionless. And Jonas is going to, like, wave a hand in front of her face. Hmm? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Boy, that was... That was just a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it sure was, wasn't it? I, um... Thanks for the help. Oh, no. Uh, of course, I mean... <laughs> that's something you do even for your worst enemy, you know? You can't just leave someone there to die. I mean, he's... He's okay, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine. The staff here is really good, so. And you see that she looks again 
into the doors of the hospital and she's like good you seem real worried about him are you too close no 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 it's just he was at my shop earlier today and i saw him later in the day i don't know it, we're not typically close but i mean i we just kind of spent the day together on accident it would seem hmm. i see and what are you uh his his nephew or something i mean there's definitely an age difference yeah uh it's uncle lewis he's always uh he's always sticking his nose into things that uh he has no reason being in yeah i'm i'm sorry all this happened you shouldn't have had to witness that or do anything like that no no it was it was my own dang fault curiosity took over i had to take a peek i was i'm just very grateful that he he took that bolt for me so that could be me on that gurney and heaven knows i can't afford any sort of hospital bills right now well i'm i'm sorry i don't want to hold you any longer i'm sure you have you said you have a shop to run i yeah i gotta i gotta close it down so Give him some good wishes for me. I will do. Uh, what's what's your name? Who am I telling him this is from? Kelly. Just just say Kelly from Scoops. He'll he'll know. Got it. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I should probably head inside. She solemnly nods and she turns around and walks back to her shop. Jonas will head inside. You see that the lobby of the hospital is very very busy. And you see the lights inside flicker a little bit. Um, Jonas will walk up to the receptionist desk. Hi, I... There was just a man wheeled in here. Uh, redhead, glasses, a little shorter than me. Um, maybe mid to late 20s. I mean, he spends a lot of time here recently. Uh, do you know what room they took him to? Yeah, sweetheart. I think I saw him go down to room 4C. 4C, got it. Uh, thank you. Uh, what's going on? in here it looks it's it's chaos she brushes some hair out of her face and she says well today we lost power then the backup generator just went shot and thank god it's finally back up yikes yeah it was mayhem for a while there but everything should be good now so sorry to hear that how long ago did you lose power it was earlier this hour so we were basically an hour out of commission well i hope everyone is all right um I'm sorry, 4C, you said? 4C, yes. Okay, thank you. And Jonas will head over to 4C. You run over to 4C, and you can see through like the glass pane on the side of the door that there are a handful of doctors in here, and a lot of them are in here just trying to make sure that Lewis can stabilize. Just for the heck of it. Hey, Lewis, can you roll me plus cool? That's a nine. Jonas... You watch as a lot of these doctors are just frantically, they take the defibrillators and they try to keep this dude alive. Jonas wouldn't hang around for too terribly long, maybe just like 15, 20 seconds. They just kind of stand there and uh, glare at the unconscious Lewis through the glass before eventually they just kind of take off down the halls and just kind of wander the hospital grounds for a little bit and just start listening and picking up errant conversations and gossip go ahead roll to investigate a mystery i got a six a six okay as you are walking through the halls of the hospital suddenly you feel your pendant heat up and the hospital around you flashes the white fluorescent lights above you just flash into this ugly blue and the walls around you just look dirty and stained and the floor beneath you is just cracked and in disarray and as you look around you you don't see anybody but you see in front of you this long twisting hallway what is this jonas says as they slowly step forward looking around in all directions you see at the end of the hallway in front of you these operating doors just manifest and they swing open and they go back and forth and there's nothing in the doorway until they slow down and they stop you see a silhouette on the other side and the hallway starts to get shorter as it seems like you're getting pushed forward you see the doors swing again 
the lights in front of the door flicker again, and you see Riley in the doorway, standing there in her vampiric form. Coming out of the shadows, Riley is revealed, and you see those deep yellow eyes, and she lifts her hands, and you see those claws, and her teeth are just sharp. Her brow furrows, and she lunges at you, and she grabs you by the shoulders. She tilts her head and says, You think you can save me, Jonas? You think you can save me, but you can't. Jonas is going to push her away. What's wrong with you? What are you talking about? You know I'm going to save you. You know I'm going to help you. Look at me, Jonas. Look at me. Do you think I'm someone who can be saved? Do you see what I look like right now? Do you remember what I was? You think I'll ever turn back to what I was? You can't save me, Jonas. I'm going to be like this forever, and it's going to be all your fault. And you see that Riley jumps up, and on all fours, she starts to climb across the ceiling, and you look behind you, and the floor starts going down. You begin to slip. Go ahead, roll to act under pressure. Seven. You start to fall as this starts to turn into essentially a slide, and you start to fall, and as you're falling through this long, long hallway, bursting through doors, you see that another pair of operating doors opens. Underneath it is just this spout of flame and you can feel the heat as you successfully grab onto an exposed pipe before you fall into this pit of fire. And you see Riley drop from the ceiling and fall toward you. She bares her fangs and her claws and goes to swipe at you. Reflexively, I imagine you close your eyes and cover your face and you open them back up. You're in the fetal position in one of the hallways of the hospital and everything looks normal again. Jonas is gonna stand up, breathing really heavily, and look around for a little bit before just bolting out of the hospital. Lewis, there has been a lot of time, a lot of care put into bringing you back to stability. You are still on bed rest. It's been about 30 minutes to an hour. Your eyes slowly open. You have an IV in your arm. You see all these drugs just going through your system, and the door opens slowly. Your vision is still a little bit foggy, and you see someone slip in and they take a seat next to you, and they just sit there for a little bit, and they grab your hand, and then your vision goes black for a second again, and you wake up again, and you blink your eyes a few times, and the chair next to your bed is James Boulette. Lewis kind of, like, very groggily will pop up in shock. Hey, 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 careful there. What do you want? Um, you see that he reaches to your end table, and he grabs your cup of water, and he offers it to you. Lewis looks at him very skeptically. Are you okay? What happened to you? What does that all matter to you? Just wanted to make sure you're okay. You know, Lewis, you and I used to be friends. We used to be really close when you were doing your residency with me. Obviously, that all ended pretty quickly. Uh, yes, you made that abundantly clear when you broke into my house. Yeah, Lewis, listen, you have to understand. Sometimes, when you're blinded by success, you do a lot of dumb things. I used to be the top surgeon in the county. Hell, for a moment there, I was top surgeon in the state. And then it was all stripped away from me. Obviously, I was too prideful to blame myself, so I made the conscious decision to blame someone else. To hold that anger against someone else. And I spent, God, I spent years focusing on that wrath. I spent years wrestling with this contempt, this anger, this spite. And it didn't help, you know, when you're jobless, homeless, nowhere to go, hopeless, you know. And I made it my sworn duty to find you and ruin your life as you had ruined mine. But word got round to me that you were in the hospital on death's door. And it put things into perspective for me, Lewis. I'm not asking you to forgive me. I know I scared you. I know I, I probably traumatized you. I know you're an English teacher now. I, I, I think you gave up the medical profession for good. Yes, a thousand percent. 
Just as that day's burned into your memory, it's burned into mine. Yeah. Like I said, it's really put things into perspective for me. I mean, I I got myself a new life here in this small town. Uh, yeah, you're working waste collection? Yeah, it was a, it's a temporary gig. It's the uh, best I could find on a short notice. It's not bad. It's better than nothing. But, Lewis, I mean, we used to be a big part of each other's lives, and I'm sorry that I threw it away just like that. And you see that he takes a deep breath, and he reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out a slip of paper, and he kind of tucks it into your hand. I'd like to get back to how things were. That paper has my number on it. Just, when you get out, let me know. Maybe we can catch up, have lunch or something. Uh, you know what? Um, Expect that call from me when I'm out, which, uh... Let's see here, uh, first degree burns all across the body, near instant cardiac arrest should be about three weeks? You see, he looks you over, and he says, honestly, with a little bit of physical therapy, I think you'd be good for, you know, a little less than five days. You'd be able to go home in five days, obviously you'll still need to return for more and look at me spouting on off like I'm an actual doctor still. I mean, hey, I respect your opinion better than my own, uh, but I guess... Thanks for checking on me. I, out of all the people that check in on me, I was not expecting you. He stands up from his seat, and he chuckles. He puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, I'll see you when you get out of here, huh? I look forward to a fresh page. Evan knows I need one, too. First round's on me when we go out, huh? Sounds good. I look forward to seeing you. And he smiles, and he walks out of the hospital room. Lewis, with a combination of relief and just utter bewilderment, looks down at the cup of water which he's yet to drink, sort of raises it up as if he's giving a toast to himself and says, to a clean slate, I guess. Jonas, where were you running off to? Uh. Did you have a plan on me were going next? No. Jonas just like bursts out the front doors. I think I'm gonna throw up. And then they sort of just take a moment, catch their breath, compose themselves. And then they leave. They're going to go to the viaduct and check on Riley. So you walk on down to the viaduct. And as you enter in one of the tunnels, you trip over something. It's a brown men's dress shoe. Just a shoe? Just a shoe. The hell is this doing here? Jonas will pick it up, just kind of chuck it to the side, and then keep going further into the viaduct. You start walking deeper and deeper into the vast tunnels of the viaduct, your steps echoing around you. You go further in, and you see another shoe. What the hell is this? Jonas will look around. Do they see anybody else? Any other indication, other than the shoes themselves, that anyone else is here? In this stretch of the tunnel... In this space? No. Jonas will keep going, but now on the lookout for more shoes, I guess. As you get closer and closer to the area in which you stashed Riley, uh, you're about to round that bend, and in your flashlight's light, you see a toppled over body of a grown man. And they're lying on their side, and they're pushed up against the wall of the viaduct. Oh, Jesus. Jonas will rush up to them. And immediately check on them. I mean, are they, like, obviously dead, or are they just unconscious? So you go to check for some vitals, you put your fingers on their neck, and immediately when you do, you pull your fingers back, and you just see that they have a little bit of blood on them, and you pull this guy over and shine your light, and you see just this row of puncture marks right in the middle of their neck. No, 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 no! And Jonas will spring up to their feet and book it to where Riley is stashed. You run into the area in which you've stashed Riley, and you can see she's in the corner, and she's just drawing in the dirt. Hey, you all right? What? Hello? Are you listening to me? Yeah, I heard you. Well, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Jonas will just kind of saddle up next to her. Look over her shoulder. What are you drawing there? Riley takes a deep breath, and she says, It's still water. That dump? It's funny, you, you never really think you'd miss the dang place, but... 
Well, we will have you back there in no time. When you say that, she immediately scoffs. What? What's that? I don't think we'll be returning to normal anytime soon, Jonas. Not with that energy, we won't. Jesus, come on, be a little more optimistic. She wipes her mouth on her sleeve, and she finally turns to face you. And you can see a little bit of dried blood on the side of her mouth. And she looks you in the eyes, and she says, You know, I'll try to be optimistic for you, Jonas, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Jonas is going to take out a couple of like makeup wipes from their bag and just kind of wipe off the corner of her mouth. We can't let this get the best of you. Really, Riley. I know you're stronger than that. Come on. You know, it's funny in a sinister sort of way. I remember the past couple of nights when I first saw you and my dad. It was like I was a passenger in my own body until sometimes when you'd reach out to me and I could talk to you and I knew what I was doing and I couldn't stop doing what I was doing, but I tried so hard. I'm sure you saw. Jonas nods. Someone came in here, and I attacked them. Did they attack you? Threaten you? Did they they have a weapon? I mean, what? That's the thing. They didn't seem to pose a threat to me. Just something inside of me just made me do it. And I was in control the whole time. It told me to do something, and I had the choice to say no, but I didn't. She looks straight ahead for a moment, and then she turns her head to you and she says, And this is going to sound really messed up, but I, I don't really feel bad about it. And I know, I know that's bad. You don't have to tell me that that's not good. I, I know that's not good. But as hard as I try... I don't feel any remorse. It just felt natural. Riley, you... You can't do that. Yeah, no, I know. I know I can't do that. You you don't have to talk to me like I'm 100% a monster. I get it. Killing people is bad. I know. But it's just hard now. I don't... I don't think... I don't think you will ever understand it. Riley, I... I could have killed Mr. Green twice over. I've chosen not to. Something told me to do it. It was well within my power, but I didn't. I'm not here to chastise you. I'm not here to give you shit. I want the best for you, and you know that. I need you to promise me, if anything like this happens again, if anyone else comes down here, I need you to promise me that you're not going to just attack them. I need you to hold out, Riley. She closes her eyes. And she takes a deep breath. Jonas, I don't think it's that easy. But I will try. Jonas is going to stand up and take her hand and just pull her into a hug. She sits there for a moment, just kind of taking it in. It's not until a very long pause that she reciprocates and hugs you back. We're going to get through this together. Jonas will hold that hug there for a while before eventually the two of them, I'd imagine, just kind of split. As you guys break away, you see she wipes her face and she smiles at you. Hey, listen, I know you don't think that things will go back to anywhere near the way they were before, but, and Jonas is going to take out another one of those makeup wipes. And start scrubbing at uh, their cheek where they got hit uh, several, several months ago by the slug monster. And there is sort of a bit of cracked, a little bit of gray like skin. I took this hit five months ago. Ate away at part of my face. Uh, there was a little, little bit of a hole there for a while. And they gesture to Riley. I think I can make this work. I'll be back in the morning. And then Jonas retreats back down the way they came. Instead of just leaving entirely, they're going to go back to the dead body of the guy. 
when Jonas returns to the body, they just kind of kneel down and get a good look at who this guy was. I feel like this is a good time to roll read a bad situation. Nine. You can hold one. I suppose, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Looking over this man's body, you examine those bite marks. You see just how pale their face looks and how drained physically that they look. And you notice that they are wearing a a blue windbreaker. And you turn them over and you see that transparent plastic walkie that goes into their ear and curls all the way down into like their back pocket. Jonas is going to take out the walkie, take out the earpiece, just kind of look at them for a second, and then they will hesitantly stick the earpiece in their ear. You stick the earpiece in, and the only thing that you hear on the other side is static. And you can see on the walkie itself, there's a red light that's just flashing. Jonas is going to sit down and use the same magic that they used at the Crossroads Diner and try to figure out what happened here before they arrived roll plus weird 12 and your effect i would like to observe another time you sit down and you hear a drip from the water residue in the viaduct and as that drips and drips you hear it stop as the drip starts to go in reverse and it's rewinding and rewinding and it stops you watch as the man in the blue windbreaker pulls out a flashlight and he clicks it on and he's slowly walking forward down the viaduct. You can see that he's looking around, shining his light. He's taking in all of his surroundings as carefully as he can. And you see crawling on the ceiling is Riley. And as this man turns around, Riley drops. The man jumps in shock, and she grabs him by the shoulders and digs her teeth into his neck. As she does, there's blood coming out of his neck and it's spilling out of her mouth and onto her cheeks and her chin. And you watch as this man struggles and he opens his mouth to scream out, but nothing comes out. And suddenly his eyes roll back and he falls to the ground and you see Riley wipe her face and she smiles a little bit and she runs back. And as you watch her run away, you see time speeds up and you hear that drip, drop, drop, drop. Once that's over, Jonas will open their eyes, take a deep breath in, and then a deep breath out. And they're going to take the walkie and smash it against the walls of the viaduct. You bastards can't have her. 